At this time, coming to the stage right now is a man who needs no introduction. Yeah, no introduction! welcome DC Entertainment's Chief Creative Officer and author of countless Green Lantern comics, as well as a co-producer on the upcoming feature film, Mr. Jeff Johns. Thanks for waiting in line, I'm sure it was a pain in the ass. Uh, I love you too. Uh, so, um, we're here about Green Lantern, right? Everyone's here about Green Lantern. And um, the, uh, we brought something. Uh, it's not a trailer. The trailer will be out uh, May 6th with Thor. Um, it's not entirely finished, but it's something that's damn cool. And you'll, this is a taste, we're going to show you a taste of what you'll see June 17th. So, um, I want you guys to see this really bad, so let's, let's do it. Uh, pretty awesome, huh? Uh, is uh, our own Carol Ferris, my favorite leading lady, Blake Lively. And uh, the main man himself, the Emerald Warrior, Ryan Reynolds. of this movie because I know it's for you Ryan it's the first movie like the special effects super heavy how's it feel to I know you just saw this stuff so how's it yeah. feel to uh, to shoot on a, a blue a blue screen stage and in a gray suit and then see, see that it's pretty spectacular I mean you know spending six months in a sound stage in Louisiana you know staring at the color blue <laughs> until you have nothing but two smoking ocular cavities. <laughs> Actually feels pretty good when you see that shit right there. That was, that was... All right. I highly recommend it. Uh, so Blake, one of the things... Uh, when, we, uh, when we first met, there was a big debate about whether or not your hair was going to be you're going to be a brunette, or, or you're going to leave your hair blonde. And you were really, the thing that I loved was that you were like, it has to, we have to dye it. So why, why did you, why did you want to do that? Well, for everyone here, I mean, there was no debate. You know, Carol Ferris is a brunette, and I'm blonde. I couldn't, it's not me, it's her. I had to, I had to make the, you know, the fans proud, and I actually, um, there was this, this bodyguard that I, work with on Gossip Girl, and he never says more than two words. I've worked with him for four years. He's very, you know, serious and stoic, and, and um, you would never pin him as somebody who's ever read a comic in his life. And as soon as it came out that I was I was cast for um, for Carol Ferris, he pulled me aside and said, "Tell me what's happening, and, and what are the costumes, and who's playing this, and we have to make sure." And, and just like grilling me on, on on Green Lantern, and he goes, "Your hair has to be brown." And I said, okay, yeah, whatever. He goes, no, you don't understand. It has to be brown. Not only for me, he goes, but for your own security. Your life is in danger. <laughs> so, you know, I said, you know, this is, this is a matter of national security. So, my hair is So, so Ryan, I saw your diet uh, down in New Orleans. It's, it looked pretty awful. Yes, uh, just, I all I ate were orphan children. <laughs> what did you have to do to, to, to prepare yourself? For the Green Lantern, um, you know, is it, look, any any one of these kinds of films, you have to be obviously physically prepared. I mean, you know, I'm I'm not an old guy, but I'm not you know 19 anymore. When landing from 20 feet onto concrete was hilarious. <laughs> uh, now it, it sort of hurts. So uh, so you know, you had to be physically ready. But yeah, I spent about six months before shooting just doing everything I needed to do to become Hal Jordan. And uh, you know, one of that was one of the things was gymnastics, which. You know, you can't tell on TV, but none of those guys are 6'2". It's very hard to do a standing backflip when you're over 5'7". Yeah, so we're teaching people gymnastics, so, you know, just, just trying to get me used to, you know, rotating in the air and not, uh, not throwing out the orphans I ate. So, Blake, uh, you guys, this is the first time you guys worked together. So, tell me about that experience. What, what, was, the, what was Ryan like on the set? Horrible. 
big is just awful. We actually, they just CGI'd what? us in the same scenes together. <laughs> yeah, the restraining order made shooting difficult. <laughs> I was actually so jealous of all the stunts that you guys did, the flight training. My first day on set, um, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying New Orleans, I went and got beignets, and you know, I come to set, and here he is on, on this harness flying, was it 100 feet? Yeah, we went over 150 feet in the air that first day. Yeah. It was amazing. So we're in the middle of the city of New Orleans on this giant crane, and here he is flying. It was it was so incredible. And, and they had a, a stuntman above him, you know, who was uh, parallel to the ground with a camera. Um, so all that stuff that you see is, is really practical and cool. But uh, other than that, working with him, <laughs> being jealous and, uh, you know, feeling like he was my rival. Well, you know, Kara Ferris does become Star Sapphire, so... I plan to yeah. all my pent-up anger and aggression and <laughs> So, Ryan, out of, you could be any superhero. Um, I know you really you really wanted to be the Green Lantern, so why out of all the characters did, did you choose Green Lantern? Well, I, look, I mean, I, I, I had a meeting uh, on... What's that? <laughs> to show off that six-pack. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Hating being bombarded by superhero movies. <laughs> Are they holding out for Black Swan too? <laughs> I, I, I will say this: I, I think all the superhero movies, this, particularly this summer, it's obviously there. There are there are a lot more than typical. Obviously, I think each one is so different. But you know, this this I grew up as a Star Wars kid. And, I mean, for me. <laughs> Even just selfishly, it's so I, it's, it was a, such an amazing pursuit to be a part of this thing and, and just to see it come together in this way. And you know what? I, I'm not typically like a, you know a studio loyalist, but this studio, I mean, they, 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 what they've done with the Harry Potter movies and their ability to, 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 to spend the money in the right ways and get the right people and not cheap out and you know at the last minute is that's 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 also reason enough to do it because the technology is here that we can make a movie like this. Ryan, Mr. Yeah. Ryan, uh, I know for uh, Comic Con uh, you recited the Green Lantern's Oath. <laughs> We're wondering if San Francisco could get some love and you can recite it for one time. I think we should, yeah, we should all do the oath. We are the core, so. Yeah, can, can we all do it? Yeah, why don't you. We all know it? Yeah, we all know it? Alright, you ready? Right. And brightest day. Brightest night. We move. 
my side. Let those who are so Beware my power. You guys will all know it in a few months. Oh boy. Front row blew it though. Oh, that was the theme song to WKRP in Cincinnati. Yeah. My question is also for Ryan, even though I love Blake too. Um, Ryan, now that you've played a villain in Wolverine and a hero, honestly, what action scenes do you enjoy doing more? Well, look, Deadpool is not a villain, he's an asshole. <laughs> I love this more because this this kind of you know this captures your imagination in ways that nothing else could you know so there's obviously both are a lot of fun but you know getting to immerse yourself you know wholly in the in the mythology in this way and also we're sticking to the mythology pretty solidly so that's you know that's a huge bonus as well it's you know, somewhat important when you come into a room like this hey, who who win in a fight Green Lantern or Deadpool oh my god. I'm gonna go with Green Lantern at the point. At this point in time, definitely the Green Lantern. Be it. Oh come on! Uh, my question is for both of you. Um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about um, developing your character, finding your way into the character, and uh, were the comics useful to you in doing that? And anything in particular from the stories or the, or the images leap out of you to help you with your character? You know, we were very lucky because we had Jeff with us on set often. Um, you know, so we had the, the, the current god of Green Lantern there, you know, so we had this well of knowledge and resources. Um, yeah! Um, so, you know, we had somebody on set that if, if, if we stepped out of line and we weren't doing something right, you know, we, we had the voice of all of you guys there with us. Um, you know, and you know, obviously we looked at the comics too. One of my uh, my rap gift from them was uh, the the very first comic that uh, Star Sapphire appeared in. And I was so excited I wanted to open it, but it was Friday. Like, oh no, 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 we can't. <laughs> you probably shouldn't touch that or soil it. But um, you know, so <laughs> I haven't actually seen the original one of that. But um, anyway, so yeah, Jeff was our, my greatest resource. For me, it was it was you know it's easy enough to sort of say oh he's the guy that can you know tell a joke, throw a punch and kiss the girl, that kind of, you know, Han Solo type, you know, but, but really it was, it was, it's an origin story in essence and, and, you know, what I loved about the script was it didn't start, the, the movie didn't really start in the third act like a lot of origin stories can do, it starts when it starts, right at the beginning and that's, that was something that was fantastic for me, but, but, um, you know, finding a character that is at the beginning quite cocky and arrogant, you know, he's a guy who's really reckless and he's given this, this unbelievable extraordinary gift and and in, in receiving this gift he actually finds some kind of humility and, and real purpose and and that was something that I thought was was pretty pretty cool hi Ryan Reynolds your name is so beautifully alliterative um, my middle name is Rodney I'm not really kidding. yeah That's named, named after my uncle who none of us talk to anymore <laughs> I don't even know why. I think it's because he drives a panel van. Oh. Uh, and he just sort of like seemed a little creepy. <laughs> um, my question is, after you're playing Green Lantern, yeah. um, and then the rumors that you're going to be playing Deadpool, I'm not sure if those are entirely true yet, um, how do you feel playing Deadpool later on in a full-length movie of him will compare to the Green Lantern? And also, you guys are awesome, I love you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I, you know, I, look, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to get into the Deadpool stuff. It's not, it's not something, it's, there's so many unknowns there, you know. Um, but I loved playing and when I got to play him, um, you know, there's things that I, I would have changed. <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I don't finance these movies and, you know, and I don't have a say like that. But, uh, but if it ever comes about that we get to make one, it's going to be made in the right way. Just hard, hard. Yeah. Oh, um, well, it actually only took about six months to shoot it. It felt like a hundred years. 
um, you know, because of the, you know, all the, 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 the special effects and all this sort of things go really slowly. But it was only about six months, you know, and, the, and it's the post where this movie begins. You know, when we wrapped production in Louisiana, the movie started for everybody else. So, you know, there's a there's, there's hundred men and women that are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week right now on this movie to get it ready for June 17th. Yeah. Hey, Ryan. Um, hey. Big fan ever since Two Guys and a Girl. Yeah. Thanks. One thing you're known for, it's your sarcastic remarks and your one-liners. Were you given freedom to improvise things on this movie, to improvise what um, you said? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely, you know, but you don't, the character's not funny, he's sort of got a wit, you know, it's kind of a dry wit, so you really want to safeguard the character, first and foremost. It's easy, and, you know, sometimes it's too easy to just say, oh, let's throw in this, you know, cocksure line here, but you want to you want to actually make sure that you're still playing Hal Jordan. So, you know, we were, we were very careful to make sure that there's wit, but not, you know, he's not a comedian, he's not a funny guy, necessarily, but he's a, you know, he could throw, throw, throw a line around pretty well. Yeah, yeah I, th I thought the lines that you had here and there were just fantastic. I mean, they just really brought the character. Yeah, you want to have moments of levity, definitely, you know, and I, I looked at, you know, this guy, and I said this before, as a Chuck Yeager, Han Solo hybrid, and, and uh, you know, when it, one of the things I loved about Han Solo when I was growing up was the fact that he could, you know, he could he could throw a, just like a dry one-liner out that would just so bring you back in the movie. And I think I think those are important. So, yes, sir. Hello, Mike. Um, this question is actually for Blake. Um, if this movie, if this becomes a franchise, or whatever, and you get to be Sir Sapphire, will you enjoy doing all the stunts and stuff, uh, the stunt work that Ryan had to go through and fight him and whatever? So thrilled. The only thing that was a little daunting was the outfit. <laughs> um, maybe they could put a little more material on. <laughs> okay, um, but yeah, you know, the, 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 the stunt training that he got to do was, was, was so exciting, and, and you know, we, we had the, the best people there. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm such a fan of the Jason Moore movies. That I, if I could trade places with anyone, it would be Jason Moore. Um, you know, so we had people there that, you know, worked on the suns and that, and, you know, it was, um, I would love to do that. I would love to fly and beat him up. Back to the outfit. <laughs> That's going to be a good fight. Yeah, I think so. I think so. The movie's called Green Lantern. I have a feeling I'll win. <laughs> Yeah, I argued for just straight up fishnet. 
and uh, nobody listens to me. Uh, no, I, I, the mythology in the film is such that this, the suit is made of energy, and it's something that Tom Murray even, even explains to Hal in the, uh, in, in, in the film, and, and uh, so that, that you can't put on a suit of pure energy practically without third degree burns. So I, uh, I, you know, I was in a motion capture suit, and that was, that was fine, that was fine by me. But uh, you don't want to be in a motion capture suit, by the way, in, in August in Louisiana. It's a lot, a lot like a coffin with a zipper. Yeah. Yeah. All right, take care. Oh, we have a man down next. Oh, there we go. We are experiencing some technical difficulties. No um, kidding. I know. Surprise. <laughs> Would you be interested in doing a Justice oh, League movie? Well, there we go. Uh, I could echo one man and one woman. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not something that anyone's talked to me about or approached me about, so I'm not sure if they're going to even like, hear them thinking about it. That's Jeff Johns. I don't, I'm not in charge of anything. I mean, we, we can't really talk about much about Justice League except it's in development. Oh. Well, there you go. Uh, this is for Ryan or Jeff. I just want to know if there are any physical Green Lantern suits in the movie. Physical Green Lantern suits? And where can we buy them? <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw a guy wearing one a minute ago. <laughs> no, they're all, they're all, it's all CGI. Which makes them very expensive. <laughs> Hi there. So Hi. any uh, questions for Ryan Reynolds? I felt that Blake was left out. Blake, Please. I just wanted to uh, welcome you on behalf of San Francisco. That wasn't squealing at Ryan. Mm -hmm. uh, my Sir, have at her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my question is, what is he like? <laughs> I was going to ask what it's like working with Ryan, but I didn't want to waste this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> my question is, if, will it be possible for you both to come back to Northern California from mid-June until uh, Halloween to visit the Cartoon Art Museum? We have a Green Lantern retrospective running for four months, and we'd love to have you come visit. I think you can probably ask the public sisters. <laughs> But I got all these. Hello. Hey. Uh, as we know that this movie is based off of the secret origins Jeff Johns has written. Yeah. Does that mean that Atrocitus is going to be in this movie? No, he's not in this film. Not not this one. Oh. oh. No, I just said not this one. That wasn't made, like a hint. <laughs> The other core is going to be in the possible sequels, depending on the, yeah, how well this will go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, I, I'm sorry, I blacked out. What, wait, what, what was the question, sir? No, uh, basically, will Carmen show, other cores show up in the possible sequels? I, I bloody well hope so. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I hope so. Yeah, I think so. Star Sapphire. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Blake, love you on Gossip Girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not the only one, thank God. Um, Ryan, you were once rumored to play the Flash like before. You kind of ruined my question, by the way. But the whole Flash joke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was wondering what happened to that project. Or, if that was ever really true. And as for the current Flash project, who do you think should play, I guess, Barry Allen? Oh, that's a good question. Um, that's, that's tough. That's a, that's a, a, it's a great role. I mean, you know, it's one of the best. You should uh, play the Flash, and then we'll do a Flash Green Lantern movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that won't turn me into some kind of ass pudding. <laughs> Die. Uh, like, uh, who would make a good fl Wally West? Is that who you're wondering? Yeah. I, I don't know. Whoa, guys. I don't know. I, 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 think, I kind of think Bradley Cooper would make it. Yeah, why not? Alright, next question. Hi. Oh. Oh. So, maybe up. Not much love tonight. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, I was just, you know, 
Um, I've, me and my mom have loved you since Sisterhood of Traveling Pants. Now, on to Gossip Girl, and we watch you every Monday night, you know, gossip. And uh, I, I would like to know how is that different from going from gossiping with Lee Meester to Star Star or Freelancer? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very different. You know, um, I actually finished Gossip Girl at 1 in the morning in New York and, and was working in New Orleans at 6 a.m. already on this. Um, so, you know, this took up my what would be break, but, uh, you know, it's, it's very, um, it's rejuvenating to, to be able to go away and, and play a character that's so different, you know, just um, just being in a, in, a, in a world, you know, of blue curtains, you know, everything that you're doing uh, is out of your control, the world that you're existing in you know, um, is up to all these incredible visual effects artists that we have working tirelessly, like you said. Um, so, to be able to do a job and not know what it's going to look like and then see this footage, it's, it's so exciting, it's so thrilling. You know, we were sitting backstage, you know, we can have a better audience than you guys. It makes you feel really good about, <laughs> about you know, the movie that you're in. Um, but it's, it's incredibly different, and also the hours, you know, we, we shoot 10 pages a day on Gossip Girl, and in a movie you shoot a page, page and a half a day, um, so it's, uh, it's almost harder work to, to be on a television show. It's true. You're laughing, why are you laughing? It's I mean, I didn't have to fly 150 feet in the air, so it's, it's going to be harder work for him, but he should come be on Gossip Girl for a little while. <laughs> I was wondering, since I've been online for so long, people already asked my question, so I'm going to ask for both of you, what was it like working with each other? Like, did he keep you on your toes and stuff like that? Was he annoying a little bit? Uh, owe you money. <laughs> you can go first. Well, I mean, you know, the, the, these, these movies, everything is done pretty carefully in terms of casting and all that stuff. And, you know, we actually got a chance to kind of read together a little bit before when we were trying to figure out who's playing what and all that stuff. And, and we just had chemistry. And, that's, and chemistry really, genuinely, is one of the few things in film that you can't just invent or create. It's either there or it's not. So it was, it was fantastic working with, with, with Blake. I mean, she just brought every, every part of herself. And she's not kidding when she says she'd get off set at 1 in the morning and she'd be back over in New Orleans shooting at 6 a.m. and not a single complaint. In fact, sometimes she'd just come on set having just baked it mysteriously and curiously a batch of brownies. <laughs> I was like, you so no sleep at all tonight? Nope. Nope. Have you cooked these brownies for you that you can't eat, Ryan? <laughs> yes, have you seen the soup? So, yeah. So, but it was, it was incredible. Um, yeah, you know, the, the, the same for me. It, it's amazing having Ryan be the Green Lantern because he is, as you guys can see, impossibly likable. And, you know, it's, it's true, but, you know, Hal Jordan, he's, um, he inherits these, these superpowers. And, you know, to have somebody who, who still carries such humility and, and, and wit and uh, intelligence was, was so much fun to work with because Hal and Carol are, are rivals, you know, in the air. They're both fighter pilots. They, they you know, they go neck and neck. So I always say head to head. Like, I don't know. My ankle mom, to ankle. <laughs> I say saying so wrong. <laughs> so I don't know if I'm saying that. But, um, you know, and then, you know, he's, he works for her, you know, for her, this aviation company that she has, and, and he's completely reckless and crashes millions of dollars worth of planes. And, um, you know, but there's also, you know, that, that love. So, um, you know, the ability to be able to, you know, spar and banter with him is always a uh, fun time on set. And he's, you know, he is always changing it up. And we did about 92 takes uh, of everything. So, he gives it, why are you owing? <laughs> disappointing everyone, say something funny. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's tough, you know, but apparently, you know, it's hard as a TV show. <laughs> oh. So you've given the real answer what it was like to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to hear it, I think they are too. Yeah. And I want to know how you guys got your big shot. Uh, um, I, 
Well, I, I moved to Los Angeles with no intention of becoming an actor. I started in, in improv comedy in Vancouver. And I've, done, uh, um, I've, done, I've done a bit of that there, and, I, and, I, and I, I'd also done a lot of, you know, the kind of acting you did in Vancouver during the 90s, which was playing sort of ex, every ex-soap star's son in every movie of the week that came to town. You know, she's an alcoholic. Oh my God, she's a anorexic. It's those, those movies, you know, back in the 90s. So. Um, I was kind of like, ah, this isn't a lot of fun, but I, I really wanted to join the Groundlings in Los Angeles. So I came out and, and tried to get a, a tryout for them, but I didn't make it. Um, and I just remember that, you know, if you, if you really love, I mean, I assume that you want to be an, an actor. Are you an actor? Is that what it is? Or Oh, you like musicals and stuff like that? Yeah, see the thing is, is you just got to do it. That's the, the real thing. A, a director once said that to me. He said, you know, I, 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 he, he was talking to another guy who was an aspiring director and he, he said, I really want to direct. And the director said, well, you should be directing them. And you should always have a camera in your hand. You should always be doing it. So wherever you can find that, you know, and you, if you live in San Francisco or any sort of city, you can, you can find that kind of community there. You just have to do it and continue to do it. And, then, and if it gets you onto a, into a film, if it gets you into a, you know, a local theater, I mean, either way, you're, you're doing it. You're, you're part of something, and that's that's really what counts most. Yeah. All right, this is going to be our uh, our last question, so make it a really really good one. Sorry, guys. Uh, hi, Ryan. Um, I just wanted to know after doing the movie Just Friends, which is like one of my favorites, do you like doing the comedic movies, or do you like doing the Green Lantern parts more? Um, I, I like it all. I mean, I, I've been really lucky that in my career that my career was a slow build. It was a real aggregate, you know, and and, and I'm grateful for that because if I it was in the place where I'm at now and, and I was 21, I'd, I'd be I'd be I'd be dead. Uh, so let's be honest. So I, I, I but I'm, I'm really lucky in that way that I got because of that because I didn't have this enormous success in my early 20s or something like that. I was never known for just one thing, and I, and I was able to kind of work in a lot of genres. And, and in working in a lot of genres, I count myself very lucky. So I'm, I'm going to keep doing it as long as I can get away with it. And, and there's none that I prefer necessarily. So yeah, thank you. Very much.